The Romance of the Ranchos. Los Angeles, 1850. College founded at Lugo Townhouse. Bell, 1856. Cattle boom brings sudden wealth to rancheros. Bell, 1927. Firestone Tire and Rubber Company builds huge plant. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the historic events which formed the colorful background for our Southern California of today. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, narrates another fascinating chapter of romance and adventure. And tonight's story is indeed a fascinating one because of the fact that it deals with the land on which are now located the communities of Bell, Huntington Park, Vernon, Walnut Park, Southgate, Linwood, and East Los Angeles. We extend a special greeting to the residents of those communities. But the story is so exciting and romantic, and it had such an important bearing on the development of the entire Southland that it will be of equal interest to all of you listening wherever you live. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles is happy to present it for your enjoyment. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to spin the story. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Tonight, our magic carpet of radio takes us back through the years to visit one of the greatest of the ranchos, one of the most aristocratic of the dones. The Rancho San Antonio of Don Antonio Maria Lugo. It is a story steeped in the romance of the ranchos. The story of the illustrious family of the Lugos starts in 1769, when, among the first Spanish settlers to come to California, Jose Maria Lugo landed and settled at Santa Barbara. A few years later, in 1775, a son was born, a son who was to become one of the patriarchs of California, Don Antonio Maria Lugo. Like most other Spanish gentlemen of his generation, he served as a soldier in the armies of the King of Spain. And in that capacity, he came to Los Angeles in 1803. There one day, he made a chance encounter. So you have decided to stay here, eh, Don Antonio? See, si, I think so. It is more pleasant to live. See, the climate is nice, and but some of these soldados have received grants of land around here. That is fine. Perhaps I too can manage one. Ah, not for me. <laughs> I would rather be at San Diego. There is more to do, more life. Look at this sleepy little pueblo. Just look at it. Here we are in the main class, and what do you see? A few houses, a church, a merchant or two. Ah, not for me. <laughs> is that all you see? Eh, of course. Then you are blind, senor. Look, huh? crossing the street, on our way to church, no doubt. Just the senorita, like any other senoritas? No, no, I know you're blind. She's beautiful. Mm, she beautiful, perhaps, but not very resourceful. She seems to be stranded in the middle of the street. Oh, see, si. there is a great puddle of mud for her to cross. See, si, you are right. Perhaps we should... We, oui, senor. But to you, she's just like any other senorita. Oh, no, 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 senor, you shall wait here. This is my honor. <laughs> Hasta la vista. <laughs> Good luck, mi amigo. Adios. Ah, pardon, senorita. Uh, may I assist you? Certainly not, senor. I can manage quite well myself. But I protest. Allow me to take your hand. Senor, I do not know you. Oh, senorita, that is my bad fortune. One that I shall try to remedy at the earliest opportunity. And uh, why not now? Senor, please, go away. I do not speak to senors to whom I have not been formally introduced. Go away and leave you hopping about in the mud? I can manage quite well. Oh! Uh, be careful, senorita. Senor, how dare you? Take your hands away. But you would have fallen in the mud if I had not caught you. Never mind, I... Here, here, stop this quibbling. I shall take you up oh, like this. Senor, stop! Carry you across the puddle oh. like this. Oh, senor! No. And deposit you oh. safely on the other side like this. 
Senor, you are bold. A soldado must be bold, senorita, in love as in war. Love, senor? You are more than bold. Oh, a figure of speech only. But uh, I could not stand idly by and see a beautiful young lady in such distress. Oh, you must not say such things, senor. But you are beautiful. I will not listen to you. Hmm. Am I so unattractive as that? No, you are not unattractive, senor. But it is not proper. I do not even know you. Then you shall, right now. Senorita, lovely flower of the desert, allow me to introduce El Senor Don Antonio Maria Lugo, your admiring servant. Buenos dias, Senor Don Antonio Maria Lugo. And you, Senorita? You shall have to find that out elsewhere, my hero of the mud puddle. Hasta la vista. But, Senorita, wait. If you find out, you may ask my father if you may call. Hasta la vista, But, but Senorita... <laughs> you may be sure I will. Oh, very sure. And Don Antonio did call on Margarita Ruiz. In fact, he called up, and they were married within the year. Soon after, the young husband built his first home at a place called Sao Qual, or the Elders, which is the present site of Bell Station. But he didn't give up the dream of owning a great rancho. Seven years later, he was successful in his petition to the governor for a grant of land. Over 29,000 acres were provisionally given him, and the Rancho San Antonio was started. On this great domain, life progressed peacefully and quietly. Rancho San Antonio became one of the great haciendas of Spanish and Mexican days, noted for its great herds, its fast horses, its magnificent hospitality. And Don Antonio attained the eminence of a patriarch as the years went on. Among other honors, he served as juez de compo, or judge of the plains, which was the ultimate authority for all disputes in that simple and peaceful era. The judge of the plains was a justice of the peace on horseback, the on-the-spot arbiter of every quarrel. Often, Don Antonio was called to an outlying ranch. Uh, Don Antonio, I'm glad you've come. There's several matters for you to set. See? Si? Well, let us hear the first, then, and we shall see what can be done. Very well. First, there is the question of Don Ramon's calves. Already the calves Don Ramon found on his land. See, si, that is better. They are not his calves, but mine. And how do you know that, senor? If they were found on Don Ramon's land, then the Orejanos belong to him. But, senor, those Orejanos were following the madre. See, si, it, it was plain to see. I have witnesses that they were the calves of cows which carried my brand. Oh, so... Is this true, senor? See, si, it is, Don Antonio. Very well, that makes a great difference. Even in dumb animals, the tie of blood must be respected, senores. Uh, we can suppose that these calves should not have strayed onto the land of Don Ramon had not their madres done so. Therefore, I rule that the calves do not belong to Don Ramon, but to this senor here. Gracias. Gracias, your honor. Now, what else is there? Uh, the question of the cattle thieves who have stolen 200 head of cattle from the rancheros in the valley. We have found out that the leader of the band is the Indian Joaquin. See, si, I have heard of him. You have proof of this, senor? See, si, one of my vaqueros, Pedro, saw and recognized him. Very well. I order the capture of this Joaquin on the charge of cattle stealing. I shall instruct a posse to attempt his capture at once. See, si, that is fine. Uh, and now, your honor. See, si, what else? A dispute over one cow, senor. It is an unbranded Orejano, which senor Ortega and I discovered. It was standing on the line between our two ranchos, half in his... Half in mine. And uh, you both claim the creature? See, si, but my claim is the more worthy, Your Honor, for the cow stood with its head over my land. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what does Senor Ortega claim? That since the head is useless for hide, the part which was the, the greater value was on his land. Perhaps you should cut the cow in half, eh, Senor? <laughs> <laughs> what are we to do? Where is the cow now? I do not know. But while we were arguing about it, the Orejano wandered away and became lost in the brush. But we shall find it, Your Honor, for we marked its flank with a great cross of white. Hey, a great cross of white, you say? See, si, on the flank. But, senores, that is the cow which wandered into my garden and began trampling my corn. It is? Si. Then it is found. You shall return it, senor. Oh, I fear that will be impossible, senor. Eh? Why impossible? Uh, uh, pardon, I am sorry, but you see... I ate it. I... (laughs) 
The pleasant, peaceful life of the ranchos went its even course for years. Then suddenly, California found itself the object of covetous glances from several different nations, including the United States. And presently, before many of the sleepy inhabitants were well aware of the situation, the American occupation was underway. And great events touched the Lugo domain as the last battle of the war was fought on Rancho San Antonio on January 9, 1847, the Battle of La Mesa. The spot at the present site of the Union Stockyards in Los Angeles is marked with a monument of stones. Now the life of the sleepy Pueblo began to undergo a gradual change as the American settlers came pouring in. But with them came another and less desirable element. The gold rush in Northern California had brought every kind of roughneck and desperado into the state. And presently, Los Angeles was overrun by a wave of extreme lawlessness. Respectable citizens of the little town were becoming alarmed. Strong measures were needed. Things came to a head one night. Whoa! Whoa! Well, Betsy, old gal, here we are back home. Just a minute and you'll have... All right, you... senor. Uh, Put up uh, your hands. Uh, what is this? All right, Temple. Hand over your money. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, uh, Temple, my name's I not... said hand over that money. If you don't... Uh, but, but you're making a mistake. My name's... Oh! Clifford. Dead by the hand of a notorious desperado and gambler, the citizen Pinckney Clifford. Quickly, the irate people of Los Angeles gathered around the tiny jailhouse where the captured culprit was held. This is the last straw. These things must stop. Yeah. Let's get him. Let's put a stop to this business. Yeah. Bring him out. We'll fix him. We'll show him. Bring him out. Give him up. We got a necktie party already. Come on, everybody. What are we waiting for? Let's go in and get him. Hold on. Hold on. Mayor Foster. What's he yelling for? All right, now just hold your horses, everybody. This isn't benefiting the citizens of a city like ours. Where are you oh, going? No, wait a minute. Here we are, trying to clean up Los Angeles, making it a city of law and order. What do you fellas do? Throw over everything we've tried to do. Oh, All right. Law and order. We ever expect to have order here. we got to establish it from the ground up. we got to let the courts take care of the criminals, not disregard the laws. Oh, and you talk about lynching. You're just as bad as the men you're trying to get. Look who's talking. Hey, what's the matter with you, Steve? Hey, get soft. You used to ride with the vigilantes. All right. Yes, I know. I used to ride with the vigilantes. Now, we have courts and authorities to handle these things. It's their duty. And it's ours as good citizens to give them a chance. Oh, Oh, go on home now. Yeah, let that murderer get away scot-free. He won't get away. I promise you that. He'll get what he deserves. How do we know that? I give you my word. Mayor of Los Angeles and a citizen like you, I promise you that justice will be done. Well... If this man isn't hanged for his murder, I promise you I'll resign my office and march at your head to see that he is. Stephen C. Foster, one of the first mayors of Los Angeles under the Americanos, who was also Don Antonio Maria Lugo's son-in-law, risked his office to stop the lynching. But a month later... Yeah, you can't out of my there. way! Come I'm in. going in to see the mayor. Come in! Come in! So, Foster, you promised that Brown would be hanged for murdering Clifford, eh? Yes, I gave you my word. Well, what are you going to do now? I... What do you mean? Brown was sentenced to be hanged? Yeah, he was supposed to get strung up tomorrow morning. Well? But he isn't. I just found out the Supreme Court has granted him a stay of execution. He's going to get out of it. Oh. Well, is that all you can say? You gave your word, Foster. I know I did. And now let's see you make it good. Well, how can we respect the law if we... No, no matter. I did give you my word. Is that all you're going to do? Sit there writing... I'm writing my resignation. I'll be with you. Because a policy of title insurance is so readily procurable, you might think it must be simple and inexpensive to produce. But the fact is that the issuance of even the simplest title policy, no matter how recently the title may have been searched, requires no less than 21 separate operations. 
each of which requires the services of highly trained personnel. Furthermore, the operations I've just referred to do not include the routine work of maintaining the system of records or title plant, which, of course, must be maintained whether or not any title policies are issued. In other words, the Title Insurance and Trust Company must maintain an up-to-the-minute record on every parcel of land in the county in order to be able to issue a policy of title insurance on any parcel of land. It is only because of the size and completeness of its great title plant and the trained efficiency of its record searchers and examiners that the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles can issue title insurance policies so promptly. Remember these facts the next time you have need for title insurance. Remember, too, that the rates of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles are substantially lower than the average cost of similar protection elsewhere in the United States. Fighting the lawlessness of early Los Angeles demanded strong measures, such as Stephen C. Foster was forced to use. And although conditions gradually improved, the little city was never to revert to the peaceful and quiet village of the Dons. And so it was that many of the rancheros abandoned their townhouses to retire to their more peaceful ranchos outside the city. Such was the case with Don Vicente Lugo, Don Antonio's son, who owned the Lugo townhouse. Don Vicente? I don't know what to say. This is indeed a generous gift. Not at all. I would rather that this house were to be used for some good purpose rather than another gambling den. <laughs> well, I'm happy that you feel this way. I am only sorry that I cannot change the location to a more desirable spot for a school. Well, no, that's not important, senor. I believe the St. Vincent's College will prosper in spite of any unfortunate surroundings. Senor, I hope so. It is a bitter thing for me to see this lovely plaza, once the center of the finest residences, the front yards of our finest citizens, turned into a thoroughfare of drunken, obscene, brawling gamblers. Yes, it is unfortunate, but that, senor, is life. And life has changed, and we must accept it. I can only hope that this beautiful house which you have so generously donated to our college, shall not change, but shall remain an inspiring memory of the great days of Los Angeles for all to see. The townhouse of the Lugo still remains standing on the East Los Angeles Street on the south side of the Los Angeles Plaza. Historic as the first two-story house in the Pueblo, it served as the home of St. Vincent's College until, in later years, it was taken over by Chinese merchants and is now a curio shop. But the rancheros were still the leading citizens of Los Angeles, even though the Americans' progressive spirit was slowly forcing them out. They had a few more years of prosperity. In fact, the greatest they had ever known. For in the early 50s, wealth came to Los Angeles. <laughs> Catch it, mis amigos. Whoever catches it can have it. There. Jose, Jose, mi amigo. Come, stop this. Oh, don't be sent to me, amigo. Come, get in on the game. Catch the peso. Jose, stop it. You are mad. Come with me. Come. Oh, no, mi amigo. We are playing games. I cannot leave. You are coming with me. Hurry. Ah, we were having such fun, mi amigo. Why do you take me away? Jose, I could not believe my eyes. You have suddenly gone mad. I never could have believed it. You should be so foolish. Foolish, mi amigo? See, si, foolish. Do you realize what you were doing? Tell me, what was I doing? You were throwing money away, gold pieces. Throwing them to the crowd. Have you gone mad? No, mi amigo. It was great sport. But gold pieces. Oh, fool, what are they to me? Nothing. Spare change. Gold pieces? See, si, you do not seem to realize me, amigo. I'm a rich man now, a very rich man, and so are you. You are mad. What do you mean? I have just returned from San Francisco. I took a herd of cattle there, and I came back with thousands, thousands of pieces of gold. Now I'm rolling in gold. You have been gambling. Oh, no, senor, it was not necessary. I sold my cattle, see, si, for $75 a head. Senor, you are loco. $75 for a cow hide. Oh, no, 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 senor. Not for the hide, for the cow, for the meat. What? For the meat? But the meat of a cow is not worth $75. It only makes them carne seca. Oh, no, senor. Always there was the hide which was worth more, but not now. The Americanos, thousands of them in San Francisco, they want food, meat. 
And now the beef is far more valuable than the hide. Ten, twenty times as valuable. And we, we're all rich. You, with your thousands of heads, you can sell them for a princely fortune. Is this true? See, si, see. Si. Hurry, mi amigo. Drive your herds to San Francisco. There, a fortune is awaiting you. The soaring cattle prices of those times brought undreamed of prosperity to the rancheros of the Southland. And, not knowing that it could not last forever, they took advantage of their new riches to indulge in an orgy of extravagance. Hey, look. Look, here comes Don Felipe Lugo. See his splendor outfit. See? Look at his saddle on his horse. Inlaid with solid gold and silver mounted. It must have cost a fortune. No, 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 not at all. Only 2,000 pesos. Lavish expenditures on clothes. Lavish display in hospitality. The good-hearted Californians welcomed the chance to pass their prosperity on in happiness and good cheer with their neighbors. Great fandangos were held. Guests thronged the haciendas, and gaiety ran high. Welcome, welcome, mis amigos. My house is yours. Come in, come uh, in. Gracias, Don Vicente. I took the liberty of extending your invitation to a few friends of mine. Wonderful. Welcome, all of you. And the friends, they invited some friends of theirs. Oh, hey, no, the more the better. I am most happy to have you all. Come in, come in, come in, please, Don please. Vicente. Don Vicente, I, I, I just want to tell you I must be leaving. Leaving? But, senor, you are not enjoying yourself? I see, 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 but I must go. I, I, I've been here two days already. What? Only you have been here only two days? <laughs> oh, mi amigo, then I shall not hear of you leaving. Oh, but Don Vicente. Oh, no, no, no. You must not leave until you have been here two weeks. <laughs> no, but uh, really, I, I must go. I, I cannot waste any more time. Time, senor. Have you ever heard what time is? Who it was made for? <laughs> time was made for slaves. Of course you have time. Come now, no nonsense. Enjoy yourself. We shall try our hand at the gaming table, eh? Oh, no, no, don't be sensei. I am almost out of money. Oh, then borrow some. Borrow some. See, that is what I do whenever I run short of gold. <laughs> borrow. It is very easy. Oh, but the interest they charge you, senor. Six percent a month. Oh, it is not much, senor, six percent. Besides, you shall pay it back, no? Yes, you will pay it back when you drive the next door to San Francisco. Oh. So why not? Oh, 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 oh come, you are timid. Uh, maybe, senor, but this cannot go on forever. Money does not grow on trees. Oh, 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 oh no, senor, you are right. No, money does not grow on trees. But it does grow on four legs. On who? Oh. Ah, we do not have to worry as long as we can raise our cattle. Until that time, yes, until that time, we have money to burn. Si, si, but have you thought perhaps that time might come soon? Senor, Don Vicente... See what? What is it? Senor, there is still no rain. See, si, I know. How long has it been? We have had no rain for over a year. A year. Senor, it is serious. The earth is parched. The grass is dried up. There is nothing for our cattle to eat. How many have we lost so far? Oh, it is hard to say. They fall down and die out on the hills. We do not find them. But I have counted a hundred carcasses on one little hill. It must be thousands. Juan, I don't know what to do. I have borrowed money, expecting to pay from the cattle money. I know. There has been no cattle money. For a year, I... No. It is, as you say, serious. You mean the rancho must be sold? I hope not. Juan, how many cattle have we left? How many could you round up? Mm, perhaps 500, perhaps 1,000. The answer is... is our last hope. Round them up. We shall try to drive them to San Francisco. But, senor, they are half starved. They'll never get there. We'll try. It's our only chance. But, senor, from here on, we should be all right. With fresh grass and water, our cattle will be able to make the rest of the trip. See, and the farther north we go, the more grazing land we will find. The worst is over. Uh, see, <laughs> and, and we still have almost 700 head. Ah, that much will help. Yes. Uh, what is that? Senor, look. 
coming out of the canyon up ahead. Men on horseback. They are bandits. Cattle rustlers. Can you hear after our cattle? No, there are too many of them. We cannot hope to stand them off. But what shall we do? Do we shall fight. Come on, hold them and back them. Hold them up. One. See? Yes, he is dead. See? Three killed. We were lucky it wasn't more. See? And they heard? They got away with over half of it. What? We still have about 300 head. See? But that is not enough, one. Not enough. <laughs> Misfortune came to the aristocratic Lugos, as it did to most of the old families of California. Bit by bit, they lost their vast rancho San Antonio. Until today, all that remains is a small tract upon which stands the home of Don Vicente Lugo, one of the first wooden houses ever to be built in Los Angeles County. In the years that followed, part of the land which once had been the rancho San Antonio came under the ownership of Jonathan S. Slauson, for whom Slauson Avenue was named. And on this part, a few years ago, the great Firestone Tire and Rubber Company factory was built. On other parts of the rancho, the towns of Huntington Park, Vernon, Walnut Park, Bell, Southgate, Linwood, and East Los Angeles were built. And today, the land of Don Antonio Maria Lugo is the heart of a great industrial area. Over this land echoes the hum of factories. Its houses the greatest concentration of industry and commerce in western North America. Such is the story of progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. In a moment, Frank Graham will tell you the subject of next week's true story. He has already told me that it's going to be one of the most interesting thus far. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles hopes, however, that these stories are providing you with more than just a half hour's entertainment each week. More than a series of history lessons sugar-coated with drama and music. The real hope of the company is that these broadcasts will increase your interest and pleasure in living in Southern California. For all of us can enjoy our Southland more when we're familiar with its rich and adventurous background, when we know the romantic origins of its colorful names and landmarks, when we can picture our individual communities as they look to the strong men and brave women who pioneered them for us. And what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, we're going to react to the adventurous life story of one of the early American pioneers in Southern California, Don Benito Wilson. It's a thrilling and exciting chapter in the romance of the ranchos. And so, until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, Featuring Frank Graham as your wandering vaquero is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>